Hi, I'm Amy Feinberg, uh, the, I guess the director, and uh, yeah, that's what I did on this show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Wendy Miller. Um, I produced and wrote and starred in the show. Yeah. Uh, my creative intention with this show was to be funny, but to be thoughtful, and, uh, and hopefully to share a message that can be helpful, make people laugh, and um, yeah, maybe give them insight for themselves about something that they need to hear, but mainly to be funny. <sighs> my creative intention, well, I'll get, I'll start off locally. Um, I mean, my favorite thing to do is to collaborate with other artists. So um, Wendy and I have been working on this for, gosh, a year and a half probably. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, first in the writing um, mm -hmm. and creating a process to tell the story that would be mostly funny and have different ways of telling the story. Um, and then to actually put it up. It started as a one-person show. It ended as a six-person ensemble. Um, and I think in terms of sharing a message, um, there's several things, but um, most importantly to me um, is I think this, these issues, uh, issues of relationship and body issues and and even, you know, the solutions being found in the exterior of, of, um, uh, of cosmetic surgery, um, and then finding the kernel of truth of what was causing that, um, this uh, molestation um, and self-worth um, issues that, um, that weren't even understood throughout her life. Mm -hmm. um, and having that uncovered um, for all to see and bear witness, I think. Um, so, uh, and to do it and laugh your way through it is uh, the mm -hmm. key. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's interesting to trace through a three-day run, right? We had kind of our, our, our bumpy, you know, dress rehearsal, it wasn't one dress rehearsal, it was opening night, but, um, but the night to try it out, and then we had kind of hitting our stride last night, and then, uh, you know, and then being able to kind of say goodbye to it today mm -hmm. with, a, a very, with an audience that um, seemed mm -hmm. very familiar. So. Well, this is a weird thing to say, but meeting Nellie Spears, the, um, the everything, uh, what is she, stage manager, <laughs> Um, kind of just meeting a human being that did so much for this show and was so willing, her, her, her uh, personality, you know, her, her attitude was incredible. I know that's strange to say for a show that, but I think the stage manager was like beyond great, mainly because her, she was so easy um, and so desiring this, you know, show to work. Um, that's a weird thing to say. I think um, for me personally, like as the actor, I loved being in scenes where I could just laugh. My favorite scene, I think the highlight is the Mark scene, the date with Mark. That's, it's so fun and it just sort of, um, it wrote itself. Um, it was very fun. I, that might be my favorite scene um, to work with him. Um, and I don't want to embarrass Amy, but um, you know, Amy's pretty brilliant and uh, like all fighter, you know, like, er, she's like, yeah, this isn't about just saying your lines, memorizing your lines. And I know exactly what she's saying, you know, when she says that. And it's like, damn, this is hard. <laughs> but she's right, you know? So just, I mean, there's so many highlights, but learning like 
What's it like to now be in your body and be in the scene and not memorize the words and just be? And that was hard, but, um, but I get it. I get what was going on. I got what we learned. And, and it, I mean, I can go on and on, but like, just for me, I'm not, I'm a beginning actor and this is, you know, um, brand new. Brand new. Um, another highlight when the audience, you know, gave us a standing ovation yesterday, or when I say "How y'all doing?" and they all say "Really well." <laughs> That's like a highlight during a show. You don't really know, but we have it in the show that I get to ask them that. Or when I say, you know, "How sick am I?" You know, and they all go back, "How sick are you?" I mean, they were just so willing to play and willing to be here. Um, and there's nothing like that, you know. That, I mean, I get instant return. Um, so, yeah. And, and the set is fabulous, really. I love it. I love the lights. I love the colors. Um, there were a lot of imaginative things. The um, mirror was excellent. That really worked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of... But any time I got a chance to just play with another actor in a scene, it was, that's so fun. Mainly with Sarah, I would say. It was very playful. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if you want to. Uh, I'm trying to remember the question. Uh, like highlights? <laughs> highlights. Was it? Uh, okay. I mean, for me, it was a combination of working with people who I know and love. Um, friends and professionals and sometimes both um, that I was saying to somebody the other day that even if I got to work with all professionals on this in terms of like real pros and people who have been doing it for for years like like me um, that I would miss what I call the claymation part of the process um, you know this kind of feeling of like Oh no, Mr. Bill! Like there's a, there's a, there's a, a, mm. a, an innocence that comes from having people try to create roles that have various levels of dimension um, that were originally part of a one-person show that got too big to for one person to do, um, and so I think about that. I think about you know, the, the quality, the kind of playful quality of the piece and whether or not it would stay that playful and feeling like, yeah, like, hmm. like putty, you know, um, to mold. Uh, and I think that's a big part of the show, so, yeah. Well, you're saying, because some of us have no or little to no experience in a, in, on stage. Yeah. Right? And, I mean, in fact... Most of us. Half. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, mm. you know, there's performance. There's people who, can, who perform, and then there's people who have a technique. And, and there are scenes that were written for people who really understand acting in terms of acting as reacting, and people who understand that this is just funny, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And that there's, there's, to play a, you know, a certain level, a certain dimension. Um, and then to put all those things into one play and make you feel like you're watching one play is the hard mm. part, is the equalizing part. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's hard to make somebody who's really, really um, professional and polished look unpolished. And I think that's the part that is inherently part of this process. So mm -hmm. that would be hard to do, you know. I, this is going to sound like a, a weird thing to say, but another highlight is that I wanted to be in every scene. Like, I looked forward to it. I was like, oh, yay, that scene, you know. Or, I, you know, at the end, it was a little more challenging, obviously. But um, it was just fun to come and play in the playground and play on the, you know, in the, in the sandbox. I was like... I get to go talk to that guy, and next I talk to her, and it was very fun. I looked forward to working with everybody, um, but I looked forward to being there. I wanted to be in the scene, and I think that's what made it not that scary for me. I wasn't that nervous. 
because I was like, I'm just going to go have fun. I'm just with these people, you know. So um, it was that was good for me personally. But I mean, maybe in the future, sure, I'd like to do this again, maybe you know, in the Denver area, I don't know, you know, different audience. Um, and, you know, there's a theater I like in Los Angeles, and I'm from there, so I have a lot of, a lot of people there. Um, I mean, that would be fun to do that there, sure. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's okay that we just had three shows, and we talked about it, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's fine. And, um, and you're, you're almost, it's almost a workshop. You know, you're mm -hmm. just checking it out with the audience and saying, what do you see? Um, but yeah, why not do it again? I mean, it's a lot of work that's been put into it. So what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when I think about L.A., I think the, the biggest difference between Colorado and California is that, um, is that cosmetic surgery is such a mm. um, part of daily life. And I'd be curious mm. how it how it plays mm -hmm. there versus Boulder where everybody's like natural, right. au natural and you know, that's sort true. of thing. And uh, what that means there. So mm -hmm. kind of, that's funny. Kind that's of curious. Yeah. 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 You do get a big Jewish crowd there. Like, I mean, it's, it's so not just geared towards Jews, but there's a lot, right. there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you'd have to sort of get rid of the Boulder jokes, right? As, you were saying, John, because there's a lot of, I mean, it's intended to make fun of Boulder. The halibut scene is all Boulder. Yeah, and but that's not that unusual. I mean, there would that be would people be in L.A. In LA yeah. totally asking about, right, right. you know, the, the emotional response. The emotional uh, stuff of eating fish. it. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> this is funny, too. Like, certain scenes, I wrote them, and I'm like, that's really funny. But then you're like, I was just wondering if you were anti-Semitic, and that's not that funny. Like, it's uncomfortable, right? Like, but it's not, it's just like, I'm just thinking of humor. Or like the halibut scene is more like, huh, what's going on? You know, that's weird. If you know the type. Yeah, no, if you know the type, then it works. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yes, it was for me, it was autobiographical. Um, I'm trying to see if there was anything, or there were things like the Overeaters Anonymous meeting, which I'm in that group, right? Or, and like I did do two, two times I was in, um, um, you know, when I say to him, 12 step and two times in rehab, that's all true. The heroin's not true. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the grandmothers are mine. My grandmother did kill herself driving her Jaguar into the pool. Uh, my other grandmother was quite wealthy and probably would have said things like what she said. So, yeah, my brother is that person. Um, my father, yes, that all happened. I'm trying to think. I think there were scenes that weren't... I'm trying to remember. God. I mean, the bliss store was just for Boulder. You know, that was just a Boulder joke. Um, but like family members, that was all true. And all the stuff that happened to me did, did happen. That's all true. Well, this is the, thir the third play that Wendy's put together based on her life. And so I've worked on the first two. So I kind of knew a lot of that. And when she set out to write this one, it's, you know, this is the one that was going to be received live instead of on Zoom. And so what of those do we want to find their way into this one? Um, and um, so, the, you know, that was kind mm -hmm. of part of the mm -hmm. both the writing and also to say how much of this, how much, you know, let's spring off of the truth to tell a really good story and to get messaging mm -hmm. across. So mm -hmm. maybe we start merging characters and maybe we start, you know, inventing things that didn't necessarily happen or putting jokes in that have to do with, you know, 
modern day with the COVID, with COVID or yeah. with the Supreme Court's going to be shutting us down. And, you know, that, that joke happened, you know, the month that the Dobbs decision was made, you know. So those mm -hmm. sort of things, mm -hmm. you know, came about as we were being influenced. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say for me, you know, when I direct, I direct from, I can only do it from who I am. And so mm -hmm. I would say my sense of humor is, oh, definitely. if I want to admit it, uh, is all over this Oh, absolutely. Piece. The <laughs> and, sound uh, effects. You know, yeah, the sound effects. Everything. That sort of thing is just like, yeah, you know, dark. How to tell the story, and and in a right. grotesque and absurd sort of way that right. will keep people laughing, knowing that it's gonna get, it's gonna make a turn, and it's gonna do it all at once, yeah. and it's gonna pack a powerful punch. How do we do that, and not, you know, freak everybody out? Right. You know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So some of it. I mean, a, a good portion is autobiographical, but then there's. Like, like I never had some of those surgeries. I had one of them, but I never had all of them. So it's just, right, taking something and then kind of making it, exa exaggerating it a bit. Um, right. Yeah, I would say. And this is like a trilogy. This is the third of three. And the character in the first and second is the same character as the third. <laughs> about what honestly okay calves thighs ankles not so good but um so I start off with like uh, in real life oh in real life how I feel about my ankles um I guess my reaction is like uh who cares like I don't really care um and as I get older I'm you know it's like oh yeah it's not as important and the truth of the matter is, it wasn't, I always compared and despaired. Always. Since I was little. I always do it. Yeah. So that's all true. Um, but I wouldn't cut myself or, I mean, change anything. Um, or not eat for 10 years. <laughs> or all these ways, you know, to manage my body. No. How I really feel today? Who gives a shit? Like, honestly. I don't care. Um, it was, you know, exaggerated in the story. And I was also 30 and 20 and 40 um, when I might have cared more. I think I exaggerated a lot of that. Um, but the idea was to be really uncomfortable about my insides, about who I was. Um, that was more the problem. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 